It's been a hundred years since I've seen you, and you turn up with this interesting situation. Are you going to try and steal him away from me? The air froze over. Even the wind had stopped. Not a single leaf moved. Did you say something? The trees around Shiro began to bend towards her, so much that I thought they might break in half. Shiro's eyes pierced through me and landed on Ao, who was several feet behind me. Oh. Her knees gave way. You may be free of this land, but your freedom is at the cost of your powers. Have you forgotten that in just a hundred years? Shiro's powers were directed at Ao, but I could scarcely breathe standing in the sphere of their influence. I felt a different force swell and expand behind me. But it was nothing, if not pitiful, compared to Shiro, who was able to draw energy directly from the land beneath us. Just kidding, Al said as she slowly got up from her knees. I simply had no idea. As your daughter, I would never do anything intentionally to displease you, mother. So you'll back off Misaki, then. From Misaki, then. Sure. She answered almost too quickly. It was obvious she was only replying to save herself. Her words were complaint, and her... Compliant. Compliant, not complaint. It's a very different thing. Uh, but her behavior said otherwise. Don't I have a clever daughter, Misaki? Huh? I gasped at the sudden rush. I gasped as a sudden rush of air entered my mouth. The trees slowly bent back to place. Shiro's powers dissipated without a trace. Do I have to repeat myself? Shiro laughed. She didn't trust Al one bit. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It was my honest opinion. Well, Misaki, I suppose you came here to talk about your problems with my daughter. My life's been turned upside down since she came. What do you want? What do you mean? Should I destroy her for you? Shiro slid a finger, glided a finger over Shiro's forehead. Hey! It may seem morally incorrect to you humans, but I'm not too fond of this child. I hate the fact that I get her leftovers too. Besides... Besides? She's the same as I am. Depending on the situation, she can easily turn on you. She's born that way. Why? I asked. Because it's more fun that way. Our goddess smiled. Well, what's your choice? Whichever way, I'll be entertained. You don't have to kill her. I don't have to kill her, but I could make her watch me. But I could make her watch me take you. That's bad taste. I never asked for your opinion on my preferences. Choose. Please don't kill her. Shiro nodded as if she knew I would say that. At the same time, she looked completely bored. No wonder you never feared me. Your resistance has been strengthened by my daughter. <clears throat> He's been so harsh to me. I've never been rejected this way by a human before. I wrapped herself around my torso. Again. Don't come close. Don't touch me. The moment you know you aren't getting killed, this. I love how annoyed she looked. Uh, Shiro on the top screen there. Um... Just making the most of it. Come to think of it, there's something else that annoys me about the situation. What is that? Ah! Please don't take my buttons again. How is it my daughter is not good enough for you? Misaki is such a meanie. I thought you two didn't get along. Ao stepped up to stand beside Shiro and pretended to cry with her face in her hands. I could tell she was laughing. How do you know that he blank and blank? He... Oh. I just saw the, the censored actress action command thing. He knew how I felt, but yet he blank and blank me. I knew he was bad, but that's downright terrible. The two actresses slowly began to advance on me. So you seduced both mother and daughter. Nasty. He's the one that made the first move on me, mother. You have to take responsibility for your actions, you know? Yes, there are consequences. I took a step back. I buttoned up my shirt as I did. Oh, that will come off again soon. Don't bother. We'll all have lots of fun. To find fun. That's not fun for me. Somebody help! Nobody will hear you in the mountains. Ha ha ha! All prey must be eaten. Figuratively speaking. Hee <laughs> hee. And then I... Uh... Fell to my knees. Then fell unconscious. And we're back in his room. Our delivery doctor, Manaka Shido, examined me as I rolled around in my futon. She was quick in her assessment. Okay, so that's like generic bedding. Folded and stored away during the day. Okay, whatever, she was quick in her assessment. 
Dasteritis. That doesn't sound positive. She said as if I didn't have long to live. Then she looked away and added, Stress related. How accurate she was. What? Why didn't you tell me sooner? Never hide anything from your wife. Hmm. I thought you looked a bit fragile. Looks like, you got fra looks like you've got fragile nerves, too. Misaki, I'll do anything to make you feel better. Err. Alright, new visitors allowed today. Get out, all of you. Minaka grabbed all three of them by their collars like kittens and tossed them out of the room. How could you? It's a wife's duty to stay by her husband's side. Give me a moment. Minaka strode out and closed the door, her white coat billowing behind her. I can imagine what was going outside from all the ruckus. I heard through the door. A few seconds later, Misaki Kono and his merry men. Doctor, there should be a space there, Minaka muttered as she returned. I've sent them home. It's just me and you now. I'm surprised you managed that. I'm used to handling gods. She sat by my pillow. I should say rest well, but I'm going to tell you not to. Doesn't that go against your profession? I'm saying this because resting will only be a temporary solution. You've got to dig down to the real problem. Are you telling me I should run after them and confront them? They're too big on their ego and, they're, and, there's a, and you won't stand a chance when it comes to those ladies. Direct confrontation won't, you ser won't serve you well, kid. Minaka looked around my room sleepily. What are you trying to say? Find a way to change yourself. Right now. You say that as if it's easy, but that's really hard to do, you know? It's like the average in examinations. It's easier to tutor the ones with bad marks and improve them than, than bring everyone else down. It's hard for the ones... <clears throat> it's hard for the one with the bad mark, though. I closed my eyes. Don't sleep. I was thinking. What are you going to do? I've got someone I can ask for advice. I go to her. By the way? Yeah? You should stop sitting like that when you're wearing a miniskirt. Doesn't the sight invigorate you? There's nobody in this world... Whatever. No, it doesn't. I rolled over to face away from her. If you know what you're going to do, you can rest now. Perhaps she was trying to confront me because she placed a hand on my face. How warm, I thought, and drifted to sleep. And this chapter just keeps going. All right, we've been, I've been talking for like 20 minutes now and apparently I'm gonna be talking for a little while longer. When I m woke up, doctor, there should be a space there. Monaco wasn't there anymore. Is that just a localization thing where they don't put spaces between the title and the, the name? Cause I'm used to seeing like doctor space Monaco or whatever that is. Anyway, enough harping on localization. Instead, there was a paper bag of medication placed by my pillow. Also, a cold bowl of porridge. I said my thanks to her quietly and began and hungrily ate the entire bowl. I took my medicine and then curled up in my futon again. Everything was too quiet. This position, this environment, was the most suited to my current mental state. My me defensive mental barriers is well tested by Ao. I think I got that wrong. Uh, this position, this environment, was the most suited to my current mental state. My defensive me mental barriers well tested by Ao. Well, I guess I read that right. A completely detached, quiet, and balanced state of mind. Change that, Shido Manaka had said. Break down your defenses. Create a revolution. There was, this was the, this, that was the same as killing a part of me. I pulled over my cell phone and dialed a number. After a few rings, she picked up and I heard her voice. I'll leave the back door open, she said. I got up and got ready to go out. Another pretty picture. Uh, just as promised, the back door to the Tawada estate was unlocked. Even so, I moved as quietly as I could and opened the door just wide enough to squeeze myself through. I was far away enough from the, so the lights from my house did not reach me. I held my breath, looking around to see if anybody had noticed me. Relieved, I sucked some air into my lungs. Right on time. Yeah. It took me a few seconds to swallow, to swallow a scream. I could hear her laughing at me in the dark. Yuki doesn't know, does she? The Shira Tawada began to walk. Oh, so are you two, like, on friendly terms now? Because that wasn't the situation the last time I saw you. Uh, she didn't ask for an explanation, nor did she act as if she needed one. I frowned, I followed the sound of her voice through the darkness. A small red dot of, a small red dot of light glowed in front of her face. Yuki doesn't seem, didn't seem too happy when she went to bed. She was chased away quite sternly. Because of you. The moon came out from behind the clouds. I stopped my tracks. What's so funny? The way you're dressed, I'll say. She she was still wearing a kimono, but she uh, but she had one sleeve off a shoulder and had a sara 
A long piece of cloth that used to be wrapped around the chest like a bandage. So it's like a traditional thing. Alright, whatever Yakuza wife is. Uh, I was amidst, I was amidst a heated game. I didn't know you smoked. She had a cigarette between her fingers. A thin trail of smoke rose curling into the air. Only when I'm up for an all-nighter. What do you think? What do you mean? How do I look? Thanks for your time. So you're in a hurry. It was my first time in Mashiro's room. Ooh, Misaki-chan, do you miss Mami-chan so much you had to come look for me? But for some reason, the room felt familiar. These aren't mine, just so you know. These all aren't mine, just so you know. The shape of the room was identical to Yuki's. But on the floor, there were silver board games scattered around and a few game cassettes lying on the ground like a child's room. We're gonna game all night. It appeared our failed housewife had taken up residence here. I believe that one's yours. In the middle of the room was a stark white cloth spread out. On top of it, two dice and a bowl. If the police came now, I wouldn't have an excuse, she laughed. Had I had a sudden understanding why she was dressed the way she was. It suited her too well. Mommy Chan's a gambler here, too. Mom was wearing a child's yukata period. Okay. The only thing that we had... The only thing we had that fitted her was Yuki's old clothes, Bashiro explained, whispering in my ear. That's interesting. Does this make me look like a hardcore gambler? Does Mami Chan look good? You look great. Not a, not as a gambler, though. Of course, I didn't tell her that. I also explained why I felt so familiar in the room. Most of the games scattered on the floor were Mom's toys. But why are you here, Masaki Chan? Are you gonna game too? I've got something to discuss with Mashiro San. Is, is it this? Please stop sticking your pinky up. You're not going to deny it. Oh my... My dear son. I finished her sentence before she could say anything indecent. Um, just as I suspected, Mom looked disappointed. Oh come on, you're so boring. Please, take censorship more seriously. I sighed. Did you come here to entertain me with a mother and son comedy? Mashiro tapped her cigarette on an ashtray. Or did you come to talk about your relationship problems as a teenage boy? Hey! Why don't you come to Mashiro Tan and talk about that? Shouldn't you confide in your own mom first? How do you know I scored a perfect record when it comes to relationships? Really? How many did you date? Takaki-san. Oh, mom, just dad? Mashiro Chan, give me that. You smoke? Mom snatched the cigarette away from Mashiro's fingers and pulled it on with a, while making an effort to look cool. The moment the smoke entered her lungs, she began hacking and coughing for dear life. My story begins in Tokyo. I began to talk. Mashiro lighted another cigarette, ready to listen. And this chapter is still not over. I might have to, like, split this up into multiple videos, because I do not like half-hour videos. By the time I was done, there was a neat pile of ashes in the ashtray. You certainly have a serious problem there, Mashiro said through slit eyes, mainly because the room was filled with smoke now. <sighs> it's so smoky in here, Mami Chan complained, breathing as if she was that guy wearing the skull helmet from the dark side. I assume they mean Darth Vader. I didn't think that one had a daughter. As I come to think of it, I shouldn't be surprised since she's been alive for hundreds of years. I just can't imagine her being with a man. I was amused by the way she called Shiro that one, but it was fitting for Mashiro. I'm curious. Maybe you could demonstrate how that came to be possible. For science. Huh. I'm just joking, Mashiro laughed as she bit down on her cigarette. Your body belongs to my daughter. I won't let that one have you. Um, no, I don't belong to Yuki. Yuki still has a lot to learn. Still, she is a Tawada woman. I now understand why you're able to resist her so thoroughly. You're toughened by that one's daughter. Or rather, trained like a pet monkey to instantly react in a way to preserve your life. Trained. I couldn't deny that. Hmm? Masaki-chan, you should you, you have you been developing some perverted habits without Mami-chan knowing? Mami-chan, you've got that right. Please, choose your words carefully. You make me sound depraved. But you aren't denying the essence of it. Understandable. The socialized part of you makes you behave in an, in an acceptable manner. I hate the way you explain things. Anybody that knows, notices the cage of social norms they live in will find it distasteful. Especially somebody as twisted as you. Got a problem? No. Sometimes I just need something raw. You have a split mentality. One side uses common sense and blends in with society, and the other is extremely selfish with a need to detach from everything and everyone. And that really, and that side is, yeah, and that is the side that created by your relationship with Al. 
Constantly switching back and forth between these two sides is a dangerous balancing act. I wasn't conscious about my split mentality. Being conscious meant you absorbed and processed the information that was in the world around you in an aware state of mind. If I had a split mentality, it meant the way I processed things would be completely different. Boy, that was a long paragraph. It actually wasn't. I don't know why I thought that was a long paragraph. If that was the case, I had the switching process down pat because it happened seamlessly. You're perturbed by the silliest things, Mashira smirked. That irritated me because I was pretty confident about my ability to keep calm. For example, Mashira said as she leaned forward, look here. She stuck a finger into her sarashi and pulled it forward. Her skin was smooth and white, just like Yuki's, and I could see the gentle swell of her breasts. Whoa? See, that's because inside you, you have some common sense. You know it's improper, and you have a need to agree with society's values. You behave like a normal human being, and from this comes your motivation to show acts of kindness to your friends. She straightened up and fixed her clothes. It seemed to me I would be her inferior in every way. Now because of that, I'd say you would be relatively easy to seduce. But nobody around you takes you seriously that route, tries to take that... Nobody around you seriously tries to take that route. Do you have any idea why? I challenged her stare. What she said was probably true. Then what was the reason? Because I wouldn't be able to stand it. I would break mentally? Yes. The social creature and you can go along with it. But the defensive part of it won't. You will instantly resist anybody that seems different. Your answer is correct, however. However? Your answer is only partially co correct. What's the reason then? Because it's their game, Mashiro stated. The reason why they don't use pure seduction to pure seduction to trap you, although I'm pretty sure Yuki does it instinctively, not calculatedly, is that they see a challenge in your defensiveness. Masaki Kono is not just a boy to love, but to conquer as well. And so they began their invasion. Yuki, Shiro, Ao, all of them are all obsessed with the idea of claiming you entirely. And they want to savor their victory once they accomplish that. Do you need me to expo Do you need me to explain their mentality? I shook my head. It simply means you're sick. The people around you are sick. It's all a sickness of the mind and the heart. Nobody should be allowed to take over anybody's life. There was a meaning to be. There was meaning in being an individual. Because they wanted to conquer and dominate, things were moving towards destruction. Why didn't I realize they were trying to con to control and conquer me under the name of love? Did they think I wouldn't mind? I would set up my defenses, of course. What else was I to do? Misaki-chan, are you ill? Do you need your insurance card? Mami-chan looked back at us with the game controller still in her hands. She had lost interest during the early stages of our conversation, and for that, I was thankful. I'm alright. I just know myself better now. Okay, that's cool. Then she turned back to the screen. If you know what the problem is, if you know what the problem is, change it. Change what? Yourself. In the screen, a dinosaur-like creature on a cart sped away on a race course. A dinosaur-like creature on a race course. I like it. You're the only person that can do it. Do your best. Be the man. Don't make it all the girls' fault. You should be an apostrophe after girls. Find a way to change yourself right now. It was the same as do what Dr. Minaka said. How should I change? Learn to love. How? Tawada Mashira simply smiled at me, the way a mother would at a child. She was asking me to be aggressive, to take control. A weakling like me? It will take some time, but your stomach would probably self-destruct if you hesitate too long. Your physical problems are a good measure of how affected you are by everything. She then went silent and looked down at the floor thoughtfully. After a few minutes, she suddenly lifted her head. Stay here tonight. But... I won't tell Yuki, of course. You both need time to prepare. Um, somehow you're making me worry. Of course you would be worried. I just came up with an idea for a shock treatment. But it's something for your own good, and I assure you, not for my entertainment. Now she really got me worried. There's another reason why I'm asking you to stay. She began to unpack a few things on the white sheet spread on the floor. This isn't much fun with just two people. It was a Monopoly game. She blushed a little. Can I have some coffee, please? Mami-chan wants to play too. I was going to join the all-nighter after all. Roommates. Um, I have been talking for a long time. I don't know how I'm going to split up this video in the next one, but for now, I hope you all enjoyed that. My name is Dragonite, and in the next part, we're going to see where this leads in the morning. I will see you all later.